There has not yet been a single Frenchman indicted before a French court of justice for the murder of an Algerian. In Indochina, in Madagascar, or in the other colonies, the native has always known that he need expect nothing from the other side. The settler's work is to make even dreams of liberty impossible for the native. The native's work is to imagine all possible methods for destroying the settler. Those are words written by Franz Fanon, who was born in the French colonial possession of Martinique in 1925. He was educated as a doctor, he became a psychiatrist, and in the 1950s, he went to Algeria and joined the FLN, which is the main resistance group fighting the French. And he died in 1961 of leukemia. Fanon became the most eloquent and famous spokesman for the Algerian Revolution, but he also spoke for natives everywhere. He spoke for the natives of Africa, of the Caribbean, and of all of Asia in their struggle against the white imperialists. When Fano was working as a psychiatrist in a French hospital, he started treating victims of French torture. He also started treating the torturers. And there is that appendix in Richard of the Earth, which sort of half, half tells that story. Hearing the stories, examining the psyche of the torturer and the tortured, transformed him as an individual. I have no idea, and I asked Fanon twice, did you do any good to your patients? Mm. He said, je ne sais pas. I have no idea. I don't know. I said, then what happened? He said, ça me transformed me. It transformed me. Because what he discovered in that relationship were three or four things. Mm. One was how injurious the relationship of domination is, both to the dominator and to, be, to the dominated, to the victim and the victimizer. The second thing he understood, and powerfully, was that race, he hadn't come to the full realization of sex about it, although he shows signs of seeing it in la Nesakim de la Révolution Algérienne, but he understood that race plays a very important role in separating people artificially. And thirdly, he realized, he learned this from the Algerian victims, that when the victim stands on his feet and fights back, he is not a victim anymore. Nasser was a tragic figure. He symbolized on the one hand the pride and inspiration of anti-imperial nationalism, and on the other, as Fanon so pressingly saw in The Wretched of the Earth, the many abuses and mistakes that nationalism gave rise to after its successful and often violent struggle against the empire. Fanon's real strength lies not in his depiction of violence or resistance for that matter, it lies in his understanding of nationalism and the pitfalls of national consciousness. Mm. And the chapter that he has written on what is wrong with national consciousness and what kind of a state this kind of national consciousness produces says a lot about what we have become in Algeria. And elsewhere. And elsewhere. And elsewhere. And elsewhere. You know, those essays that you wrote for Arab Studies Quarterly, Mm. a magazine which I once used to edit. But you found on, it. Found it. Uh, on the pathology of power is, I think, quite unique, really, uh, although I would have wished you to have developed them more. But this phenomenon, which really now, again, in a certain sense, justifies the internationalism of Fanon, because it's everywhere. It's not just Algeria. I mean, you have Algeria, you have the various Arab states with their various, as you describe them, Praetorian or fascist or whatever, structures and so on the absence of criticism from within, the way in which the state or political society absorbs civil society, 
the way in which in the Arab countries there, there is no press to speak of. I mean, the press is essentially a reflection of the ruler's comings and goings and his alliances and enmities of the day. This panorama all across the third world in the countries which fought for independence suggests, therefore, the extent to which nationalism just went wrong. <laughs>